Hello. I'm Danny Weston. Uh, my book, The Haunting of Jessup Rise, has been shortlisted for the Scottish Teenage Book Prize 2018. I'd like to begin by telling you a little bit more about the story of Jessup Rise. The Haunting of Jessup Rise is set in the year 1853 and concerns a young boy called William who at the tender age of 14 finds himself quite suddenly an orphan consigned to a workhouse. One day salvation arrives in the form of a letter from his long lost Uncle Seth inviting William to go out to the family home in Wales. From the moment he arrives at Jessup Rise, a big crumbling house perched on a cliff overlooking the sea, he begins to realise that something or somebody is watching him. As William's senses came back to him, he became aware of pain, a dull throb in his blistered feet from his long walk from Northwich. But it was not that which had woken him. It was the sound of a woman crying. He lay on his back, gazing over the shimmering outline of the dormer window and listened to that pitiful sound. It was eerily loud, as though coming from somewhere nearby. Mrs. Crabbit, the housekeeper, she hadn't struck him as the crying kind. He became aware now of how cold it was in the room, and he felt, rather than saw his breath clouding before his face. He was used to being cold. The long winter nights in Northwich had been bad enough, but never like this. The chill seemed to permeate right to his very bones. It occurred to him now that the crying sounded closer, as though it was actually coming from within the room in which he lay. The realisation galvanised him into full wakefulness. He sat up and peered into the darkness but could see nothing. Then he remembered the candle and the box of matches on the floor beside the mattress. So he reached out a hand and began to pat the bare floorboards, sweeping his arm from side to side in an attempt to locate them. But he must have been trying in the wrong place because his questing fingers found nothing. And now it seemed to him as though the crying was becoming even louder, the weeping becoming ever more frantic and inconsolable until it must surely fill the entire house with its sound. He thrust out his hand a second time and with a suddenness that snatched the breath right out of him, somebody put the box of matches into his hand. My inspiration for this story, I came about in a very simple way. I think as I was growing up, uh, one of the stories, the kind of stories that I liked the most were those classic ghost stories, the ones that would make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. And this was my idea that that's exactly what I wanted to do. It's actually quite challenging to scare people with just words on paper. So I decided that everything that happened in this book give people that feeling, that feeling of disquiet, that feeling of being somewhere and sensing that somebody is watching you. The most important thing when you're trying to create suspense, A, create characters that people care about. And that usually means don't give them an easy ride, give them problems to solve, uh, put them in difficult situations. Now, with suspense, here's how you do it. You have to make sure that the reader understands that there are terrible dangers there, but make sure that your characters have not an idea about them. They are going to be in a situation where they are very, very vulnerable, and they mustn't know about it, but the reader needs to be pre-warned. Do that, and you've got suspense. So, thanks for watching this video. I have to say that I'm absolutely delighted to have been shortlisted for this prize. Uh, mostly because I know that the people voting for it will be you, the readers. And just before I go, I have a few words of advice for anyone that reads The Haunting of Jessup Rise. Don't have nightmares.